Hello. <laughs> Looks a little different. I just put this together real fast. <laughs> Hello, I hope everyone's having a lovely day or night. I'm going to be so real. This is going to be a little tough, a little scuffed, and, you know, regardless, I'm going to try my best anyway. And um, I wasn't sure what to do about music in the background, so honestly, I'm just going to play what I normally play. Um, and if a song doesn't match the vibe, I'm just going to skip it and then go to the next one um, and hope for the best. <clears throat> Remember, I'm not an actor, I'm just reading the script. I just really love Devil Wears Prada, okay? Um, but yeah, I was look, I was looking so... I was trying to look so hard for, you know, the final, final script. But it was so hard to find it. Because, you know, when you are actually filming the movie, sometimes you take liberties with the lines that you're given or you change them. So, yeah, some of this stuff, the script I have, um, it has some deleted scenes, so I'll, I'll probably just skip those since, you know, if you watch the movie, you're going to be confused. Um, I, uh, I'll, I'll read some of the, I think I'll read the, like, stage direction. Um, I won't read people's like i won't say a person's name and then like read their line i'm just gonna like try and make it natural because if you know if characters are having a conversation and i'm just <laughs> and i keep saying their names it'll be awkward so i'll try to give people different voices i mean it helps it helps that andy sax has like normal english voice um and then Emily has an accent, and Miranda sounds regal, or whatever. So at least with those three, the differences can be heard. Hopefully. Or maybe I'll do a horrible job, and you'll all think I'm, everyone's just one person. <clears throat> um, but yeah, god, this script is long. Let me tell you guys. The one that I have up, it's 137 pages. So, we'll see how long this stream goes. Um, yippee. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Oh, I tried doing playing with like the pitch and stuff on my GoXLR, it did not work out. Because if I do, <laughs> this is what it sounds like. So this is normal voice, right? And then if I want to switch character, this is what they sound like. And it sounds very unnatural. Or it'll be like this. And this also sounds very unnatural. Or if I combine them, it sounds like this and it's not that good, so... Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so we're just gonna... Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. Why don't we get started? Let's get into the, the mindset. Let me, I have to get into the feeling, into the character. <clears throat> so, music up, fade in, steam on a mirror. Wiped off by Andy Sachs. Twenties, pretty but not glamorous. Smart, but green. Hair up in a towel, brushing her teeth. We intercut Andy getting ready and 
we see three or four other girls getting ready too. A drawer filled with about 40 lipsticks slides into frame. One of the girls carefully applies shiny lip gloss with the brush. Andy puts on cherry chopstick. A lacy thong floats through the air. One of the girls pulls it up her glossy legs. A comfy cotton pair of jockey bikinis is tugged out of a pile. Andy pulls them on. A gorgeous pair of sling back heels. One of the girls pulls the shoes on while her model handsome boyfriend reclines on crisp white sheets watching her. A pair of comfortable wedges. Andy dresses while Nate, her boyfriend, rumpled, unshowered, wearing an old Alice in Chains t-shirt, watches her, reclining in mismatched bed in a bag sheets. A series of quick cuts. Andy eats a full breakfast, eggs, bacon, bagel. One of the girls carefully counts out seven almonds and pours a huge cup of black coffee. Andy straightens a pile of newspaper clips from the Daily Northwestern with the byline Andrea Sachs and proudly tucks them into her hideous college graduation present briefcase. One of the girls takes Listerine breath strips, keys, and a Gucci money clip and shoves everything in a tiny Fendi clutch. The girls, looking flawless, fold their legs into taxis and town cars as Andy trots down the street and into the subway. Andy strides into an office building, confident. A guard stops her, indicates she sign his clipboard. She signs in. What floor is Elias Clark? Human Resources. Entering the runway reception area. Sleek, elegant, hard-edged chic. Behind the reception desk is an elegant logo that says runway. Andy walks over. Hi, I have an appointment with Emily Charlton. Andrea Sachs. Andy turns and sees a taller, thinner, and amazingly more groomed clacker. This is Emily. She looks the part of the sleek fashionista, but is propelled by a core of barely tamped down anxiety. She examines Andy. <clears throat> Human resources certainly has a bizarre sense of humor. <sighs> Follow me. Okay, so I was Miranda's second assistant but her first assistant recently got promoted, so now I'm the first. And you're replacing yourself. I'm trying. Miranda sacked the last two girls after only a few weeks. We need to find someone who can survive here. Do you understand? Yes, of course. Who's Miranda? You did not just ask me that. She's the editor-in-chief of Runway. Not to mention a legend. Work a year for her, and you can get a job at any magazine you want. A million girls would kill for this job. Sounds great. I'd love to be considered. Andrea. Runway is a fashion magazine. An interest in fashion is crucial. What makes you think I'm not interested in fashion? Emily gives her a look. Andy smiles like she has no idea what Emily could mean. Suddenly, Emily's Blackberry goes off. She gasps. <gasps> oh my god. No, 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 no. What's wrong? A black sedan pulls to a sudden stop outside the building. Emily begins rapid fire dialing four digit extensions. She's on her way. Tell everyone. Just then, a dapper man of about 40 walks briskly by, Nigel. I thought she was coming in at 9. Her driver text messaged. Her facialist ruptured a disc. God, these people! Nigel turns and sees Andy, looks at Emily, and says, Who is that? I can't even talk about it. No time to discuss, Nigel calls down the hallway. 
All right, everyone, man your battle stations. <laughs> Did someone eat an onion bagel? The, the sedan door opens. We see only flashes of Miranda. What she's wearing, not the complete picture yet. Manolo's Chanel jacket, Van Cleef earrings. Assistants frantically push clothing rails out of the way. Editors race into their office. Andy peers in. One of the editors changes from kitten heels to sky-high stilettos. Another pulls on a body shaper under her dress. Another hurriedly dumps the remains of her breakfast, some cubes of cantaloupe, into the trash. We watch Miranda walking through the lobby. We see people react to her. Guards, assistants, and secretaries cower. Distinguished executives bow their heads in respectful greeting. Miranda maintains a high rate of speed towards the elevator. She gets in. The clacker inside immediately leaps out. Sorry, Miranda. Miranda doesn't acknowledge her existence. <laughs> <clears throat> Emily races to the kitchen, gets a glass, reaches into the fridge, pours a Pellegrino, races into Miranda's office, races back out, grabs an armful of magazines and newspaper from her desk and runs back into Miranda's office. Miranda steps out of the elevator, and for the first time, we see her head on. Miranda's look is so distinctive, you can spot her a mile away. She's unlike any other beautiful woman, singularly Miranda. Emily types frantically. Oh, this is a deleted scene. Let me skip this. Okay. Okay, the rest of the office continues its hubbub <laughs> until the moment Miranda enters the office from reception. Emily, phony smile on her face, trots down the hall to walk Miranda to her office. I don't understand why it's so difficult to confirm an appointment. I'm so sorry, Miranda. I did confirm last night, but the details of your incompetence do not interest me. Tell Simone I'm not approving the girl she sent in for the Brazil layout. I wanted clean, athletic, and smiling. She gave me dirty, tired, paunchy. RSVP yes to the Michael Kors party. The car will drop me at 9.30 and pick me up at 9.45 sharp. Tell Natalie at Glorious Foods, no, for the 40th time. I don't want Dequaz. I want torts filled with warm rhubarb compote. Call my ex-husband and remind him the parent-teacher conference is at Dalton tonight. Then call my husband and tell him to meet me for dinner at that place I went with Massimo. Right. And tell Richard I saw the pictures of the feature for female paratroopers, and they're all so deeply unattractive. I don't understand. How hard is it to find a decent-looking paratrooper? Also, I need to see what Nigel has called in for Gwyneth's second cover try. Miranda stops at Emily's desk, takes off her coat, dumps it on Emily's desk, walks past Andy, seeming not to notice her. Who is that? Nobody. Nobody. Human Resources sent her up about the assistant job, and I was pre-interviewing her for you, but I'll do it. The last two you sent me were total disappointments. Send her in. She wants to see you. Go, go, go. And before Andy walks in, Emily takes Andy's hideous briefcase and chucks it under her desk. Who are you? My name is Andy Sachs. Uh, I recently graduated from- What are you doing here? I think I could do a good job as your assistant, and... <sighs> I came to New York to be a journalist, and I sent letters to everyone, and I finally got a call from Elias Clark, and met with Sherry in Human Resources, and basically, it's this or Auto Universe. So you don't read Runway? No? And before today, you had never heard of me? 
No. And you have no style or sense of fashion. I think that depends on... No, no. That wasn't a question. Um, I was editor-in-chief of the Daily Northwestern. I won a national competition for college journalists with a series on the janitor's union. That's all. Okay, you're right. I don't fit in here. I'm not glamorous or skinny, and I don't know much about fashion. But I'm smart. I learn fast, and I will work very hard. Miranda says nothing. Just then, we hear a voice, someone heading into Miranda's office. <clears throat> we got the exclusive on the yellow Cavalli for Gwyneth. Uh, the one he showed with the huge feathered headpiece. But she'll look like she's working for the main stage at the Golden Nugget. So instead... Andy to Miranda says, Thank you for your time. <clears throat> she summons oh my god what is this she summons all her dignity and exits walking past nigel who looks at miranda who is that sad little person are we doing a before and after piece i don't know about andy staggers out of the elevator catching her breath suddenly she hears someone calling andrea andy turns and sees emily Cut into Nate's restaurant. Nothing fancy, the kind of place that refills your Sprite. <laughs> Andy's with two of her friends, Doug and Lily. Doug is built like a linebacker and very sweet. And her boyfriend, Nate, great looking, no vanity. He's the kind of guy who had his own radio show in college and played intramural rugby. It's the end of Nate's shift and he's wearing his kitchen whites. There are just a few people left in the restaurant and at the bar. Wow, you got a job at a fashion magazine. Was it a phone interview? Don't be a jerk. Miranda, Miranda Priestley is famous for being unpredictable. Okay, how is it that you know who she is and I didn't? I'm actually a girl. That would explain so much. Seriously, Miranda is a huge deal. I bet a million girls would kill for that job. Yeah, it's just that I'm not one of them. You have to start somewhere. Look at this dumb Nate works in. Paper napkins? Hello? And Lily works at that gallery doing... What the hell is it that you do? Lucky for me, I have my dream job. What? You're a corporate research analyst. You're right. My job sucks. Entering into their apartment, Andy and Nate walk home. Okay. <clears throat> you should see the way the girls dress at runway. I'm not sure I have anything to wear to work. You're going to be answering phones and getting coffee. You need a ball gown for that? I think I might. I think you look great always and I think you are so full of it okay oh Andy and Nate's apartment it's dawn small with the view of an air shaft the beds a futon on the floor Andy and Nate are asleep dim light trickles in Nate wakes up pulls Andy closer Andy's cell, Andy's cell phone rings, shrill, annoyingly upbeat. She feels around finding the phone. Hello? Now? Enter runway. Emily is in the office. Miranda decided to kill the autumn jacket story for September. She's pulling up the Sedona shoot from October. You need to go into the office right this second. Pick up her coffee order on the way. Write this down. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, where is this? Andy, carrying a Starbucks tray loaded with coffee drinks and snacks, races up the street, sloshing coffee on her shoes. Her phone rings. Where are you? I'm almost there. She runs faster. Um, okay, Miranda's office. Miranda's standing by the door to her office as Lucia, a beautiful Brazilian woman who is one of the senior editors, walks in with a couple of fashion assistants. Is there a reason my coffee is not here? Did she die or something on the way? Andy races down the hall carrying the coffee and before Andy can even say hello. <clears throat> I hope you know this is a very difficult job for which you are totally wrong and if you mess up, my head is on the chopping block. Emily takes the coffee, brings it into Miranda's office, walks back out to her desk. Okay, first of all, you and I answer the, f answer the phones. The phone must be answered every single time it rings. Phones roll to voicemail. She gets very upset. If I'm not here, you are chained to this desk. What if the building's on fire or my appendix explodes or something? One time, an assistant left the desk because she sliced her hand open with the letter opener. Letter. Letter opener. Letter opener. Miranda missed Lagerfeld right before he boarded a 17-hour flight to Australia. She now works at TV Guide. This accent is getting fucked up, guys. I'm so sorry. Man the desk at all times. Got it. The phone rings. Emily picks it up. Miranda Priestley's office. She's not available. I'll tell her you called. Yet again. Remember, you and I have totally different jobs. You run errands, you get coffee, etc. I'm in charge of her schedule, her expenses, her appointments her appointments and most importantly I get to go with her to Paris for fashion week in the fall I get to wear couture go to all the shows all the party all the all the parties meet all the designers it's divine okay stay here I'm going to the art department to give them the book What's the book? The book is a mock-up of everything in the current issue. We deliver it to Miranda's apartment every night, and she returns it in the, in the morning with her notes. The second assistant is supposed to do it, but Miranda's very private and doesn't like strangers going into her house. So until she decides you're not a total psycho, I get the lovely task of waiting around for the book. And with that, Emily pivots and walks away. Andy looks around, unsure. Wait, what do I do if... Emily keeps walking and sure enough, the phone rings. Andy looks at it. Oh no. <sighs> um, Mrs. Priestley's office. That's what I meant, Miranda Priestley's office. Uh, she's in a meeting. Can I take a message? I'm sorry, can you spell Gabana? Guess not. She hangs up, takes a breath. Got through one call. Okay. Here we go. Andy turns and sees Nigel walking down the hall, carrying a pair of stunning... Dolce slingbacks. He holds out the shoes. I guessed eight and a half. That's very nice of you, but I don't need those. Miranda hired me. She knows what I look like. Do you? Emily? 
Emily. She means you. Go. <laughs> Andy appears in the door. Miranda's talking to Paul, the art director, who's showing her a layout. It's too dark. I can't see any of the clothes. I think he intended to use shadow to show the contours of... And what is this? I want the title of the layout to bleed over the left side of the photo. So, I see, well, we needed room for the typeface to pick up the lines of the dress, which is cut on the bias, so... We... No, 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 that's not what I meant. That's not what I want. I made that abundantly clear. There you are, Emily. How many times do I have to scream your name? Actually, it's Andy. My name's Andy. Andrea, but people call me Andy. What a fantastic story. So entertaining and full of useful information. I need 10 or 15 skirts from Calvin Klein. Uh, what kind of... Please bore someone else with your questions. Make sure we get Pierre 59 at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Remind Jocelyn I want to see a few of those satchels Mark is doing in the pony. And tell Simone I'll take Frankie if Maggie's isn't available tomorrow. And did Demar Chalier confirm? Demar... Demar... Get him on the phone. And Emily? Yes? Miranda doesn't say anything, just looks at Andy's shoes, then back up at Andy, her message unmistakable. Andy flies out of Miranda's office, races over to the desk, pulls on the Dolce's. Miranda immediately calls out. Do you have de Marchelier? Andy tries to look the name up in the address book on the computer. De Marchelier, de Marchelier. Just then Emily appears, she dials the phone. I have Miranda Priestley calling. I have Patrick. She flips the call to Miranda, then turns to Andy, who's slightly panicked. She called me in and asked me about Pier 59. She says something about Simone and Frankie and someone else. Uh, and she needs skirts from Calvin Klein. I think that's the most important thing, but I couldn't tell. Oh, and there was something about a pony. <clears throat> Did she say which skirts? Did she say what kind? Color, shape, fabric? I tried to ask her, but you never ask Miranda anything. All right, I'll take care of the other stuff. You go to Calvin Klein. Me? I'm sorry, do you have a prior commitment? Is there some kind of hideous skirt convention you need to go to? Okay, let's see. Okay, Andy looks up at the showroom. Her phone rings again. Are you there? I'm about to walk in. I'll call you as soon as... Her phone immediately rings again. While you're out, Miranda needs you to go to Hermes, Hermes and pick up 25 scarves we ordered for her. Cassidy forgot her homework at Dalton. Pick that up. And Miranda went out to meet with Maisel. She'll want most, more Starbucks when she gets back. Um, all right, into runway, a Andy walks in, laden with stuff and more coffee and snacks. Emily springs up. Oh my god, what took you so long? I have to pee. You haven't peed since I left? Just then Miranda walks through, dumps her coat on Andy's desk, and walks into her office. You, 
do the coat. Do the coat. Now be prepared. The run through is at 1230. 30. And people are panicking. So the phone is going to be ringing off the hook. The run through. Right. The editors bring in options for shoot and Miranda chooses. She chooses every single thing in every single issue. Run throughs are a huge deal. And indeed, Andy can see editors running in and out of their offices, racks of clothes and accessories flying. Is it always like this? No, sometimes it's busy. Just then, the tallest, thinnest, and most intimidating clacker, the severely dressed, highly snobby Serena, walks over. After the loo, Serena and I are going to lunch. This is her, the new me. I told you. I thought you were kidding. Oh no, I was quite serious. I get 20 minutes for lunch. You get 15. When I come back, you can go. Entering the Elias Clark cafeteria. A pasta bar, deserted. A pizza station, not a soul. A salad bar. Girls crowd the lettuce area, though no one's within a mile of the dressing region. Andy races over to the deserted soup station, quickly ladles some corn chowder into a bowl. Nigel walks by with his tray. Corn chowder. Interesting choice. You do know that cellulite is one of the ingredients in corn chowder. None of the girls here eat anything? Not since the two became the new four, and zero became the new two. I'm a six. Which is the new fourteen. <laughs> Andy dips a piece of bread in her chowder, eats it. Seeing this, two of the clackers gasp in horror. That wasn't in the movie. <laughs> um... Then Andy notices she's dripped on her blouse. She dabs it. Something tells me you've got more polyblend where that came from. Okay, you think my clothes are hideous. I get it, okay? But I'm not going to be working in fashion forever. I don't see any reason to change everything about myself because I have this job. You're right. That's what that's what this multi-million dollar industry is all about inner beauty just then nigel's phone rings he picks up and listens miranda wants us upstairs chairman's on his way down to her office close on <laughs> okay andy's corn chowder and nigel's salad being chucked in the garbage Andy and Nigel get in the elevator. Irv Ravitz is already riding up. Nigel nods deferential. Mr. Ravitz? Nigel, issue going well? Our biggest September ever. Great. I heard Miranda killed Autumn Jackets and pulled up the Sedona shoot. What's that costing me? About 300,000. Must have been some lousy jackets. But I'm sure she knows what she's doing. Always. Irv Ravitz. I'm sorry, this is Andy Sachs, Miranda's new assistant. Oh, congratulations, young lady. A million girls would kill for that job. The elevator opens, Irv nods to Nigel and exits. Chairman of Elias Clark. You know what they say, tiny man, huge ego.
Entering Miranda's office. <clears throat> Accessories are spread out the floor in basket trays. Clothes are on racks. Miranda clicks through the racks. No, no, no. I swear, I don't understand why it's so difficult for you to pull together a decent run-through. You had hours to prepare. Where are all the advertisers? Um, we have some pieces from, from Banana Republic, and we need more. Miranda holds up a shirt, a skirt, shows it to Nigel. What do you think? You know me, a full ballerina skirt with a hint of saloon and I'm on board. Is it too much like the... La Croix from July? I thought of that, but with the right accessories it could work. Where are the belts for this skirt? Jocelyn races over and holds up two belts. Miranda studies them. Andy looks at them too. To us and to her, they look exactly the same. Tough call. They look, they're so different. Andy lets out a giggle. And it's like she set off a grenade. Slowly, everyone turns to her. Is something funny? No, 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 no. It's, it's just, it's just that both of those belts look the same to me. Uh, you know, I'm still learning about all this stuff, so... The silence is deafening. Everyone looks to see what Miranda will do. This... stuff. Okay. I understand. You think this has nothing to do with you. You go to your closet and select, say that lumpy blue sweater because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what's on your body. What you don't know is that your sweater is not blue, it's not even sky blue, it's cerulean. You also don't know that in 2002, De La Renta did a collection of cerulean gowns. Yves Saint Laurent showed a cerulean military jacket. Dolce did skirts with cerulean beads. And in our September issue, we did the def definitive layout on the color. Cerulean quickly appeared in eight other major collections, then the secondary and uh, department store lines, and then trickled down to some lovely casual corner, where you no doubt stumbled upon it. That color is worth millions of dollars and many jobs. And here you are thinking you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry. In truth, you are wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this very room from a pile of stuff. She smiles at Andy, who quakes. That's all. Enter Andy and Nate's apartment. You should have seen the look she gave me. I thought the flesh was going to melt off her face. It's not funny. She could be the most horrendous person I've ever met. She's not happy unless everyone around her is panicked, nauseous, or suicidal. And all the clackers just worship her. They call them clackers. They're stilettos in the marble lobby. They clack, clack, clack. And they all act like they're curing cancer or something. The amount of time and energy they spend on things that don't matter. Pouring over these minute details. And for what? So tomorrow they can spend an extra $300,000 reshooting something that was probably fine to begin with? To sell people things that they don't need? God, I'm not even hungry anymore. Maybe that's why everyone there is so skinny. Give me that. There's about $8 worth of Jar Jarlsberg in there. You know what? I just have to stick it out for one year. Then I can do what I came to New York to do. I won't let Miranda get to me. I won't.
Enter Runway. Miranda walks past Andy. Andy puts her best face on. Good morning, Miranda. Whack. Miranda's coat lands on Andy's desk. Get me Isaac. We see Andy look through the computerized address book, find the number. Whack. Another coat lands on Andy's desk. Miranda pushes her plate. What? Oh, scrambled eggs. Okay, that wasn't in the movie. Sorry. <laughs> um, pick up the Polaroids from the swimwear shoot. The whack, another coat. The brakes in my car are making a weird noise. Take it in. The whack, another coat. We need the hat from the finale of the Zach Posen show. The whack, another coat. The girls need new boogie boards for spring break. Andy walking down the street with two custom painted boogie boards under her arm. Andy's phone rings, she picks up. They also need flip flops. The whack, another coat. Pick up my shoes from Manolo. And while you're out, get Patricia. Widen out to reveal she's not only carrying the luggage, she's also fighting Patricia, a Saint Bernard on a leash. The whack, another coat, the whack, another coat, the whack, the whack, the whack. Andy's at her desk, exhausted, head in her hands. Get me Isaac. I have Isaac. Wow, thank God it's Friday, huh? You know, my dad's coming in from Ohio this weekend. We're having dinner tonight. Then we're seeing Chicago. You doing anything fun this weekend? Yes. Emily walks away. Andy and her dad are at an upscale, quiet restaurant. He hands her an envelope. Here. Don't want you to get behind in your rent. How did you... I'm gonna kill mom. Thank you. It's so good to see you. So, you wanna start grilling me now or should we wait until after dinner? I thought I'd at least let you enjoy the bread basket first. Uh, just go ahead. Honey, we're just a little worried. We get emails from you at your office at two in the morning. Your pay is terrible. You don't get to write anything. Hey, not fair. I wrote those emails. I'm just trying to understand why someone who is accepted to Stanford Law turns that down to be a journalist, and now you're not even doing that. Oh, please, not this again. Um, let's see, where's... Why did you even bother applying to law school? Because it's what you wanted. This is what I want. This being a secretary? I'm an executive assistant. You hang coats. You go to Starbucks. You're a secretary, Andy. You have to trust me. Being Miranda's assistant opens a lot of doors. Emily's going to Paris with Miranda in a few months. She'll meet editors and writers from every important magazine. Dad, I swear, this is my break. This is my chance. This is my... Just then, the cell phone rings. Andy looks down at it. Boss. I have to get it. Miranda... Okay, it says here Miranda's surrounded by crowds heading home, but in the movie, she was just in her hotel room. <laughs> My flight is cancelled. Some absurd weather problem. And then lightning strikes. I have to get home. Tonight. The twins have a recital at school tomorrow morning. Absolutely, Miranda. Let me see what I can do. I'm so sorry, Dad. I have to deal with this. 
Quick cuts of Andy on the cell phone as she and Richard walk through Times Square. I need a jet from Miami to New York. A jet. Any kind of jet. Yes, tonight, right now. From Miami to New York. As soon as possible. Please call me back as soon as the situation changes. I'm trying, Miranda. No one is flying out because of the weather. Please. It's just drizzling. Someone must be getting out. Call Donatella and get her jet. Call everyone with the jet. But... A few minutes later, Andy stands there, clutching her phone, thinking. Andy, come on, let's go in. I've done everything I could think of. I don't know what else to do. Andy's phone rings again. Richard looks at her. I'm sorry, Dad. Miranda, you don't understand. Even if I get you a plane, they won't let you take off tonight and... Emily, stop making excuses. Get me home. She hangs up. <laughs> oh my god, she's going to murder me. Enter runway in Miranda's office. Andy stands in front of Miranda's desk. The girls' recital was wonderful. They played Rachmaninoff, and everyone loved it. Except for me, because I was not there. I'm so sorry, Miranda. Do you know why I hired you? I always hire the same girl. Stylish, slender, worships the magazine. And often, they turn out to be disappointing and stupid. But you, with your fancy resume and your big speech about your so-called work ethic, I thought you would be different. I thought, go ahead, take a chance. Hired the smart, fat girl. I had hope. I always have hope. But you're as disappointing as anyone else. I did everything I could think of. That's all. Andy comes out of the office, fighting back tears. She immediately starts running down the hall. Excuse me, where do you think you- And he keeps running. Cut to Nigel's office. Andy walks in very upset. Nigel looks up, surprised. She hates me, Nigel. And that's my problem, because... Wait, no. Not my problem. I need your help. I don't know what to do. It's like I'm completely beneath her. So quit. We could replace you in five minutes with someone who really wants this job. That's not fair. I'm lucky to be working for Miranda. I didn't get that at first, but I do now. I want to be here, but it just seems like no matter how hard I try, I don't do anything right. Andy, please. Be serious. You're not trying. You're whining. <laughs> you want me to say, poor you. Miranda's picking on you. She's just doing her job. Wake up, Six. You're working at the place that first published some of the major artists of the century. Halston, De La Renta, Lagerfeld. And what they made is cooler than art. Because you live your life in it. I mean, not you, but some people. This is not just a magazine. It's a shining beacon of hope for... 
Oh, I don't know. Say, a young boy growing up in Rhode Island with six brothers pretending to go to soccer practice when he was actually at sewing class and reading Runway at night under the covers with the flashlight. You have no idea how many legends have walked these halls. And what's worse? You don't care. Because this is a stepping stone for you. This place that people would die to work, you deign to work. And you want to know why she doesn't give you a kiss on the forehead and put a gold star on your homework? Okay, fine. You're right. I'm screwing this up. And I know this could be a big break for me. I'm going to try harder. I promise. But there's one thing I can't do by myself. She looks at him. He realizes what she's asking. Oh no. No way. Please, Nigel. Nigel swings open the door to a large room piled high with shoes, bags, clothes, furs, jewelry... Andy follows, looking around at everything. I don't know what you expect me to do. These are all sample sizes, two and four. He thinks and hands her an item. A poncho? You'll take what I give you and you'll like it. Versace peasant skirt. We can pull it up, belt it, make it a dress. Mew Mew boyfriend cardigan. Alberta Ferretti dress. Smocked. Very forgiving. Let's find you some Chanel. You're in desperate need of Chanel. Don't just stand there. We have to get you to the beauty department too. God knows how long that'll take. Entering runway. Emily's talking to Serena. I have no idea why Miranda hired her. Me neither. The other day, we were in the beauty department, and she held up the Shu Uemura eyelash curler and said, What's this? They laugh. I knew from the moment I saw her that she was a complete and utter. And suddenly, Andy appears in her, in her gorgeous clothes, her makeup impeccable, hair soft, loose, and pretty. She looks grown up sexy and above all sophisticated emily voice trailing disaster <laughs> andy sits down at her desk pretends she didn't hear her emily's still staring andy's phone rings miranda priestley's office she's not in i'll leave word Andy cut to Nate's restaurant. Andy waits for Nate outside his restaurant in the alley. He walks out, bantering with a couple of other cooks. He starts to walk away, going right past Andy, stops, walks back a few steps. He looks her up and down, stunned. What do you think? I think we better get out of here before my girlfriend sees me with you. She smiles, grabs his hand, and walks him down the alley to where her town car is waiting. <laughs> Music up, the makeover montage. Oh, this is when they play Madonna's, Madonna's Vogue. Look around. <laughs> Come on, Vogue. Your body move to the music. <laughs> okay, so she does. There's a whole makeover montage. <laughs> Entering Miranda's office, Andy enters, sets a glass of Pellegrino down on the table. Just then, Miranda enters on the cell phone. The gowns are fabulous, Ralph. We're using the burgundy for the cover, try, and the lemon chiffon for the goddess story. And just then she looks up and sees Andy, the transformed Andy, and her reaction of approval is tiny, but it's there. 
Of course, she keeps talking like she didn't notice a thing. Um, cut to a bar. Andy joins her friends and Nate. She plops an expensive, fancy Bang and Olufsen phone on the table. Bang and Olufsen. Charlie Rose sent it to Miranda for her birthday. I looked it up online. It's $750. She doesn't want it, so Emily told me to keep it. All for a woman who doesn't need anything. Perfect. She Andy reaches into her bag, hands out perfume, cosmetics, etc. Here. A bunch of keels, some Mason Pearson hairbrushes. Damn it, I love your job. Doug picks up one of the perfume bottles and is about to spray it on his hand when Andy stops him. It's called Pink. Andy hands Lily a blue purse. Lily gasps. Where did you get this? This is the new Marc Jacobs sold out everywhere. I can't even find it. I can't take this. But Lily is already happily transferring her things from her old purse into the new one. Sure you can. Why do women need so many bags? You get one, it holds all your junk. Aren't you done? Fashion is not about utility, Nate. An accessory is merely a piece of iconography used to express individual identity. And it's pretty. That too. Thing is, it turns out there's a lot more to runway than fancy purses. You know who's coming into the office Friday? John Updike. Why, does he need a sweater? They all laugh. Andy plucks the current issue of Runway out of her purse. Look, there's a piece by Jay McKinnery. Mc McInerney. An essay by Joan Didion. An interview with Christiane Amanpour. Oh. Oh. I heard someone knock on my door. Wait, hold on one second. Oh, never mind. It's just Ukinia being crazy. <laughs> Sorry. Where am I? Okay, Andy's talking about, oh, look at these pieces in this magazine. And then Nate says, look who's drinking the Kool-Aid. She gives him a look. Just then, Andy's cell phone rings. Miranda. Nate grabs it. Give me the phone. He checks the name on the phone. Oh, look, the dragon lady, of course. Give me the phone. Andy grabs for the phone. Nate tosses it to Lily. I'll talk to her. Tell her she needs to get her own scrambled eggs. She tosses it to Doug. Andy practically tackles him, grabs the phone away. Come on, guys, give me the phone. They are all stunned by her vehemence, including Andy. Hello, Miranda? Fine, no problem. I'm leaving right now. And then she hangs up. You guys didn't need to be such assholes. She exits, and all her friends exchange a look. Entering James Holt's loft. Andy rings the buzzer. No answer, but she can hear voices behind the door. She pushes it, and it opens. Inside is a loft with a party going on. Andy looks around. It's one of those New York parties you think you'll never be invited to. She walks over to one of the super hot women. Um, I'm looking for James Holt. She points to a handsome man by the window, James Holt, one of the top designers, 40s, muscular, tan, impeccable. Andy walks over to him. Hi, I'm Andy. I'm picking up from Miranda Priestley. Oh, you must be the new Emily. Ooh. Oh my god. Okay, yeah. It's just... 
Ukinya wants to be part of the script reading. She wants. <laughs> Ukinya. Ukinya wants to be part of the stream. Sorry, hold on. Let me just blow my nose. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, he wants to play a character. That would help because I'm playing all of them. Okay. Where am I? Um, oh yeah, he says, you must be the new Emily. Let me see. He checks her out, looks at her handbag. Open woven leather, piece by hand and finished with the suede trim. Who made this fantastic thing? Uh, you did. Duh. He hands her a folio with a handle. It's a sketch of Miranda's dress for the benefit. The centerpiece of my spring collection. Top secret stuff. Andy takes the folio. I'll guard it with my life. Come on, you work for Miranda. You must be in desperate need of hard liquor. He walks her to the bar. She tries not to stare at the party guests. James to the bartender. She'll have the punch. And hands it to her. It's deadly. Have fun. And he walks away. Andy clutches the glass of punch. <clears throat> He's right. I had the punch at James' last party. Woke up in Hoboken wearing nothing but boxers and a cowboy hat. She looks over, sees a great-looking, sophisticated man in his 30s who has an air of mischief. Christian Thompson. Hi. I, um, I have to go. But you want to stay. You've never been to a party like this. He extends his hand. Christian Thompson. Christian Thompson? You're kidding. You write for every magazine I love. I actually reviewed your collection of essays for my college paper. Did you mention my good looks and killer charm? No, but I did point out some factual errors and a penchant for confessional semi-fiction that borders on self-indulgent. You and the Times. And what do you do? Well, I want to work somewhere like The New Yorker or Vanity Fair. I'm also a writer, but is that right? I should read your stuff. Send it over. Thank you, that, that would be great. Anyway, for now I'm Miranda Priestley's assistant, his, and his expression immediately changes. <clears throat> You're kidding. Oh, that's too bad. You'll never survive Miranda. Excuse me? You're smart, you're nice, you have a point of view. You can't do that job. <laughs> Andy hands him her glass of punch. I have to go. Nice to meet you, Miranda girl. Okay, this is, uh, what is this? Ah, okay. Skipping that. <laughs> Cut to Miranda's office later in the day. We see Miranda studying the sketches James sent over, spread out in the folio. Emily! Andy walks into Miranda's office. Call James Holt's office. Tell them I want to move the preview to today at 1230. And tell everyone else, be ready to leave in half an hour.
Nigel looks surprised. They're not expecting us until Tuesday. Did she say why? Yes, she explained every detail of her decision making, and then we brushed each other's hair and gabbed about American Idol. I see your point. Miranda and Andy ride along in heavy traffic. Miranda's tapping her foot impatient. What's a preview anyway? Miranda insists on seeing all the designers' collections before they show them. And she tells them what she thinks? In her way. There's a scale. One nod. Good. More than one nod. Very good. There's only one actual smile on record. Tom Ford, 2001. If she doesn't like it, she shakes her head. And then there's the pursing of the lips. What does that mean? Catastrophe. Um, let's see. Okay. Miranda arrange arranges herself on the Maya's daybed, legs folded. The other runway editors, Nigel, Jocelyn, and Lucia, and their assistants stand behind Miranda. James and his people stand off to the side as a few fit models begin walking out in various outfits. This season, I started to think about the intersection of East and West. No one in the room watches anything except Miranda's reaction. Um, as James speaks, as James speaks, we dissolve from outfit to outfit. James is trying desperately to impress Miranda. And this, of course, is the dress we're making for you. An overly busy red dress with too many fashion ideas being attempted at one time. <laughs> And suddenly there it is, the kiss of death, the dreaded pursing of the lips. The runway team files out, Miranda first, Andy and Nigel walk together. She pursed her lips and because of that he's going to change his entire collection? You still don't get it, do you? Her opinion is the only one that matters. Miranda, about to get into the town car, turns to Andy. Make sure you confirm my dinner with Galliano at Pastis, done. And I need to see the lookbook for the November denim shoot. It's in the car. Fine. Miranda turns to leave and then pauses. Oh, and you'll be bringing the book to my home tonight. Emily will give you the key. Entering the runway office, a key as Emily hands it to Andy. Guard this with your life. Of course. You know, if I can deliver the book, that means I must have done something right. That she doesn't think I'm a psycho. Oh, and she actually called me Andrea instead of Emily. Isn't that great? Yes, whoopee. Okay, now it's very important that you do exactly what I'm about to tell you. And then it switches to different scenes and then Emily's voicing over. The book is assembled by 10 or 10.30. 10.30. 10.30? 30. 10.30. So you must wait around until then. You'll be delivering Miranda's dry cleaning with the book. The driver will take you to Miranda's townhouse. You will let yourself in. Do not talk to anyone. Do not look at anyone. That is of the utmost importance. You must be invisible. Do you understand? Open the door. Walk across the foyer. 
then hang the dry cleaning in the closet across from the staircase. And leave the book on the table with the flowers. Fla flowers, 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 flowers. Oh my god, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> Andy looks, there are one, two, three tables all in different areas of the house. She looks very confused. Shit. Suddenly, she hears a noise. She looks up and sees two girls of about 12, Cassidy and Caroline, pe peering down the staircase. It's that door on the left. Andy hangs the dry cleaning. And the girls call down, you can give us the book. We'll give it to her. Andy shakes her head. No, no, no. It's okay. Come on up. But, but I can't. Shh. It's okay. Andy, unsure of what to do, starts to walk up the stairs. She gets about halfway up when she hears voices. Miranda and her husband, Stephen, are in the dining room, a, a sliver of which is visible from the foyer. What did you want me to do? Walk out in the middle of a photo shoot? Andy freezes. I rushed out of an investment committee meeting early. Then I sat there waiting for you for almost an hour. We were in a loft near the seaport. My phone didn't work, I told you. And I knew what everyone in the restaurant was thinking. There he is, waiting for her again. And as he says this, he stops, curious. There on the stairs, head peeking into the second floor is Andy, frozen. With the twins smiling at her. And before Andy can stop herself, her eyes float over to Stevens, eye contact. Her heart does a flip, and her eyes dart over to Miranda, and they make eye contact as well. And Miranda gives Andy a look of utter coldness, disgust, and judgment. Andy freezes. Entering runway the next day, Andy walks in, already bracing herself, and runs into Emily, emerging from Miranda's office very upset. Okay, before you start freaking out, it wasn't such a big deal. The twins said hello, I said hello back, then went upstairs and gave the book to Miranda. You went upstairs. Oh my god. Why didn't you just climb into bed with her and ask for a bedtime story? You're right, I made a mistake. Don't you understand? If you get fired, that might jeopardize Paris for me. And if that happens, I will search every blimpy in the tri-state area until I find you and kill you. Wait a second. She's going to fire me? I don't know. She's not happy. And then they hear Miranda's voice ringing out from the office. Andrea. Andy walks in apprehensive. Miranda, about last night, I... I need the new Harry Potter book for the twins. Of course. Um, I'll run down to Barnes & Noble's right now. Did you fall down and smack your little head on the pavement? Not that I can recall. We have all the published Harry Potter books. The girls want to know what happens next. Andy stands there a moment, fully aware of the impossibility of what Miranda just asked. So you want the unpublished manuscript? Miranda gives her a look. We know everyone in publishing. Shouldn't be a problem. You can do anything, right? Andy paces, panicky, Emily watches her. She doesn't get it. There's no way I can get that book. I don't care who I call. Just then, Miranda walks out. Andy springs up to get her coat. My girls are leaving on the train to their grandmother's at three. They'll need the book by then. Of course. 
I'd like my steak in 15 minutes. No problem. Miranda exits. <laughs> Great. I have to get the impossible manuscript in four hours, and Smith and Wolinski's doesn't open until 11.30. How am I supposed to get the steak? She's gonna fire me, isn't she? She's just prolonging the kill, like an evil cat with a tiny, unfashionable mouse. Okay, that wasn't in the movie, but that was kind of, that's kind of funny. Uh, let's see. She's at the restaurant. Andy flies into frame on the phone. It's for Miranda Priestley. It's very important. Yes, I know. It's impossible to get. Um. Let's see. Ah, Andy walks towards the door and suddenly something catches her eye. We see what Andy's looking at. An ad on the side of the bus advertising the latest issue of The New Yorker. Andy sees a familiar name, Christian Thompson. Christian answers his cell phone. Um, you probably don't remember me. We met at James Holt's party and I work for Miranda Priestley and... Of course I remember you, Miranda girl. You shaken off the college boyfriend yet? Listen, I desperately need a favor, and I don't know many people in the book world. The Harry Potter manuscript? You gotta be kidding. I'm, s I'm sorry to ask you, I'm desperate. Just tell her it can't be done. You'll have to come up with a plan B. We're talking about Miranda Priestley. There is no plan B, only plan A. Andy runs down the hall with Miranda's food passing Emily. Is she back? Am I fired? You know, I rarely say this to people who aren't me, but you need to calm down. Uh, into Miranda's office, we see the steak prettily arranged on Miranda's china. Andy sets up the salt and pepper, Miranda walks in. When Miranda sees the steak, she freezes. What is that? Andy looks confused. Luckily, before I starve to death, Irv invited me to lunch. Get rid of that. I'll be back at three. Please have my Starbucks order waiting. And if you don't have the Harry Potter book by then, don't even bother coming back. Andy carries a tray with all the food on it into the kitchen. She looks down at the tray and suppresses an urge to throw the whole thing at the wall. Oh, but in the movie she throws it in the sink! see. Ah, uh, okay, so she calls Nate, and Nate on the phone. Quit? Are you sure? I failed. She's gonna fire me anyway. Might as well beat her to the punch. Wow, good for you. Congratulations, Andy. You're free. Call you later. Andy hangs up, and immediately her phone rings again. She looks down, assuming it's Nate. Hello? I'm brilliant. Really. Monuments should be erected in my honor. You didn't. Oh yes. A friend of a friend does the cover art. She has the manuscript. No. That would mean I actually did something right. But the thing is, the thing is I was about to... You want this, you better hurry. Meet me at the St. Regis. Andy runs down the street to the St. Regis. 
Welcome to the St. Regis. Is there anything I can assist you with? Yes, I'm meeting someone. Right this way. Uh, enter- Oh! Oh. Enter the King Cole Bar. Christian is having drinks. Andy runs in. He hands her a manuscript. You have one hour. Uh, let's see. Entering the runway hallway. The tray with... Let's see. The tray... Oh, the tray with Miranda's Starbucks on it. We follow it down the hall and see it being set on Miranda's desk. And beside it lands a boom. The manuscript. And then Miranda, looking at the envelope... And he's standing there. Oh yes, Andy drops the manuscript on her desk, like very loudly. And then Miranda turns around. One copy. What are my twins supposed to do with that? Share. <clears throat> Actually, I made two copies and had them color copied, reset and bound so they wouldn't look like manuscripts. And where exactly are those fabulous copies? I don't see them anywhere. They're with the twins. Uh, I forgot what the line is. It's not in the script here, but she says like, oh, it's with the twins. Uh, they're on their way to see grandma right now or something like that. And then Andy looks, smiles at Miranda and says, anything else I can do for you? And then Miranda looks at her, like, sh with a shocked look on her face, and she goes, that's all. Entering Andy and Nate's apartment. Andy's making a small diorama of the pl diorama of the planetary system. Nate walks in, he's carrying a bag of groceries. I went over to Dina and DeLuca. Man, they changed like they charge like five bucks a strawberry. But I figured since you quit, we should celebrate. Listen, Nate. Wait, so you quit, but you're still doing the twin signs project? Big of you. After I called you, I realized it doesn't. Hello. Oh my God, we're back. Whew. All right. Oh my God. This is scary. I don't know what's going on with OBS recently. update maybe maybe I should try and see if there's an updated version well I was reading the part where she tells Nate like oh I'm the same person I was I still want the same things Okay, let's continue. Oh my god, guys, we're on page 80. I feel like we're so close. I hope that you guys are enjoying it, or, or maybe you're playing this in the background and like doing stuff, which is fine. Um, but also what you could be doing is watching Rosamie's 3D debut. So, cause you know, that's, 
happening right now. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna keep reading. Um, <clears throat> oh, let me drink some water though. Um, enter the conference room. The senior staff members are gathered around a table. Nigel, Jocelyn, Lu Lucia, a few others including Paul, the art director of the magazine. <clears throat> Posen's doing some very sculptural suits, so Testino wants to shoot them at the Noguchi Garden in the Chase building. Perfect. What about the accessory pages for April? Uh, one thought was enamel, bangles, pendants, earrings. We did that two years ago. What else? Well, they're showing a lot of florals for spring, and so... Florals for spring, groundbreaking. But we thought about shooting them in an industrial space. We thought the contrast between the femininity of the florals and the um, more raw, rough nature of the backdrop would create a tension, which, no. Just then, Emily walks in with a note from Miranda. Before she can get all the way across the room, Emily dissolves into hacking coughs. Miranda gives her a look, then turns back to her staff. Anyone else have anything I can actually use? Andy's at her desk. Emily walks back, blowing her nose, rubbing her eyes. Are you okay? Ugh. Tonight's the benefit. I've been looking forward to it for months. I refuse to be sick. I'm wearing Valentino for God's sake. Everyone's going to be leaving to get dressed soon. So after you drop off Miranda's Fendi bag at the Rebeaters, you can just go home. Great. Thanks. That's perfect because I need to get to Magnolia Bakery before they close. It's Nate's birthday, and we're having a little party for him. Anyway, have fun tonight. Andy, feeling liberated, walks out, carrying the present and a shopping bag with Miranda's bag in it. And that's when her cell rings. Enter Miranda's office, Andy and Emily walk in together looking confused. I want to make sure, before the benefit, that you're both fully prepped on the guest list. Andy and Emily exchange a look. Um, I thought only the first assistant went to the benefit. Only when the first assistant hasn't decided to become disgustingly ill. You'll come and help Emily. They walk out. Emily's clearly peeved. I don't see why she needs both of us. Eight second coughing fit. <laughs> don't look at me, this is the last thing I want to do. Emily dumps something on Andy's lap, a book of what looks like mug shots. These are all the guests. Miranda invites everyone. We have to make sure they all think she knows exactly who they are. I've been studying for weeks. I need to learn all these people by tonight? Don't be silly. She pulls out another big book of headshots. You have to learn these, too. Nigel is looking for a gown for Andy. Andy's on the cell phone. Lily, just start without me. I'll be there as soon as I can. We see Lily at the gallery where she works. Okay, but hurry. Andy on the phone. I will, I promise. Believe me, this is the last thing I want to... 
Just then, Nigel holds up a dress. Oh, I love that. I'll call you the second I'm leaving. She hangs up. Will that fit me? Of course, a few extra yards of fabric and a staple gun and we're in business. Uh, let's see. Ah, okay. So we're now we're at the New York Public Library where the gap where the chair where the benefit is. Andy walks up the red carpet where she catches sight of Nigel talking to reporters on the red carpet. This benefit is a social event of the season. It represents what runway is all about. Grace, style, elegance. He catches sight of Andy, smiles, and does a smaller version of the adjusting the girl's gesture. Oh, like her, her boobs. <laughs> Just then, Emily spots Andy. Oh my god, Andy. You look chic. And you look so thin. Do I? It's for Paris. I'm on a new diet. I don't eat anything. And then when I feel like I'm about to faint, I eat a cube of cheese. It's definitely working. I know I'm just one stomach flu away from my goal weight. That's great. Ready? Andy and Emily enter. It's beautiful. Everything in sight is white, white tulips, bone white china, white candles. All the guests are in black or white. Emily looks around. Uh, let's see. Just then, Miranda walks in. She's wearing the awkward dress from James Sketches, made over to perfection. Andy and Emily stand at Miranda's side as she fields greetings. Emily whispers to Amanda. What? I called her Mar Amanda just now. Emily whispers to Miranda. Oh my god, I can't believe I just said Amanda. Oh my god, I feel like... I feel like I've offended her, even though she's a character and not a real person. <clears throat> okay, let me just get back into it. Okay. Andy and Emily stand at Miranda's side as she feels greetings. Emily whispers to Miranda, John Folger, new, artist, new artistic director, circle in the square. John, good to see you. Um, let's see. A distinguished couple approaches, walks toward Miranda, Andy, and Emily. Miranda holds her smile, waiting for information. Emily? Emily racks her brain, which goes blank. She starts to panic. That's... wait. I know who that is. It's... Uh, I, I... Seeing Emily struggle, Andy leans into Miranda. Ambassador Franklin. And that's the woman he left his wife for, Rebecca. Miranda greets the couple. Ambassador, Rebecca. Emily whispers to Andy. Thanks. Okay. Just then, Andy sees a very fashionable woman with a more avant-garde look than Miranda headed for them. And she's being ups... Us oh my god. And she's being escorted by none other than Irv. <clears throat> Emily whispers to Andy, and Andy says, That's Jacqueline Follette, right? From French Runway. Yes, oh my god, Miranda hates her. 
She was supposed to arrive after Miranda left. As she says this, we see Miranda grieving Jacqueline warmly with quotes. Ah, bonsoir, chérie. Shh, ta... This is French. Bonsoir, chérie. Thank you for coming to our little get-together tonight. Of course, I plan my whole year around it. And we're all so grateful. I would not last a day on this job as someone with you're gonna get their name wrong anxiety and like a 50% success rate for known acquaintances. <laughs> I think I'll throw up. It's crazy. Um, let's see, Andy, f Andy leaves. Uh, ah, okay, Andy trots down the steps, starting to talk, starting to take down her hair as she races to the car. Suddenly, she looks up and sees Christian walking up the steps looking better than anyone ever should in tuxedo. He smiles and clutches his heart like he's been shot by Cupid. Look at you. You're a vision. Thank God I saved your job. Hey, I figured out a few things on my own too. Turns out I'm not as nice as you thought. God, I hope not. <clears throat> he openly admires her in a way that makes it clear he's imagining her with the dress off. If you didn't have that stupid boyfriend, I'd have to whisk you away right here and now. Do you really say things like that to people? Evidently. I have to go. <clears throat> Are you sure? My editor from Vanity Fair is in there and I was going to introduce you to him. You sent me your stuff, remember? I have to be honest, I only read a couple. But that was quite a big packet. But they weren't half bad. You're pretty talented, Andy. He should meet you. Come on in, just one drink. Well, maybe I could. No, no. I can't. I can't, I gotta go. Andy turns and races towards her town car. Say hello to the boyfriend for me. <clears throat> Andy's in the car, and she looks over at Roy, the driver. Can you go any faster? Entering their apartment, Andy walks in, holding a cupcake with a lit candle on it. Nate is, bar Nate is sitting and barely looks up. <clears throat> Happy birthday. Nate turns off the TV and looks at her. Nate, I'm so sorry. I was trying to leave, but there was a lot going on and I didn't have a choice and... Don't worry about it. I'm going to bed. He walks past her. Can we at least talk about it? This. He starts to leave, turns, and looks at her. You look really pretty. And he walks into the bedroom. Andy stands there feeling terrible. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Outside at the zoo, we see models wearing gorgeous evening gowns, their faces partly obscured by beautifully detailed masks, depicting different animals. We see Nigel, Jocelyn, and a few clackers. No, 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 I think Giselle should be the lizard and Vivian the donkey. The lizard's better with the dolce. Sometimes I can't believe I talk about this crap all day. Um, we see the model, blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, the clacker hands Andy a stack of Polaroids. Andy turns to go, but Nigel stops her. Get these to Miranda right away. Tell her I switched in the Dior for the Roshas. Great. No problem. Hey, adjust the attitude. Don't make me feed you to one of the models. <clears throat> Sorry. Busy day, and my personal life is going down the drain, that's all. Join the club. When you start to do well at work, that's what happens. Let me know when your whole life goes up in smoke. That means it's time for a promotion. Enter Miranda's foyer. Andy steps in, carrying the dry cleaning and the book. Moving quickly, suddenly she hears a voice emerging from upstairs. Andrea, come up here. Andy practically has a heart attack. Enter Miranda's living room. Andy walks in, curious and scared. Paris is the most important week of my year. I need the best possible team with me. That no longer includes Emily. Wait, you want me to? Oh, no, 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 no. Emily would die. Her whole life is about Paris. She, she hasn't eaten in weeks. I can't do that, to Miranda. I can't do that to her. If you don't go, I'll assume you're not serious about your future at Runway or any other publication. The decision is yours. But that's all. And then, oh, there's like a montage, I think. Andy, in Andy and Nate's apartment, Andy looks through the clips of all her articles from college and add a picture of herself at graduation, surrounded by her parents, her relatives, her friends. And then entering runway. The desks outside Miranda's office are empty. We hold for a few beats, then Andy comes in, walking slowly, still unsure. And at that moment, Miranda appears. They look at each other. Miranda nods, almost imperceptibly. Andy nods back. And Miranda takes her coat off. Andy holds out her arms to take the coat from her. But Miranda puts the coat on Emily's desk instead, right in front of Emily's Arc de Triomphe screensaver. And then Miranda strides into her office. Andy sits down, trying to grasp the magnitude of what just happened. And just then, Miranda pokes her head back in. Don't forget to tell Emily. Whew. I remember when that moment happened, like when I first watched the movie, and I was in shock. I was just like, holy shit. If this is real now, she, <laughs> she done took her job. They switched places. Uh, uh, Andy is waiting for Emily, dreading her arrival. Suddenly, she can't take it anymore and she dials the phone. Emily is in even more than her usual tizzy. Emily... Sorry I'm late. Sorry I'm late. Miranda wanted some scarves from Hermes, and she told me yesterday, but I forgot, and so... Emily, I have to talk to you. I freaked out, of course. But then I just called Martine at home, and she opened the store early, so I got them. Emily juggles an Hermes bag, her purse, her cell phone, almost mows down an old lady. She mouths sorry. Um, okay, Emily, 
When you get in, I want to talk to you about something. I hope it's not another Miranda problem. Not exactly. Good. Because I've got so much to deal with before I go. I swear to God, I can't even... And that's when Emily steps into the street without looking. The second she steps off the sidewalk, blam. <laughs> Emily's hit by a taxi. I don't know. I, I shouldn't be laughing because she just got hit by a car. <laughs> we see her purse, her cell phone, her shopping bags, some of the orange Hermes boxes and some of the scarves as they fly through the air. <laughs> Cut to the hospital room. Andy sits in the waiting room, distraught. Lying in a hospital bed, her face with no makeup, wearing a dumpy hospital robe, Emily looks like what she is. A skinny, tired young girl. Andy stands by the window, arms folded, defensive. I don't care if she was going to fire you or beat you with the red hot poker. You should have said no. I didn't have a choice. You know how she is. Oh, please. That's a pathetic excuse. Just then, an orderly walks in with her dinner, laden with fattening foods, a cream soup, bread, pasta, cheese, and dessert. Emily grabs a pudding, peels off the foil top. <clears throat> what gets me about this whole thing is you're the one who pretends you don't care about this stuff. You don't care about fashion, you just want to be a journalist, blah blah blah. What a load of bollocks. She angrily finishes the last spoon of pudding, grabs a dinner roll, which she starts to butter. Look, I know you're mad, and I don't blame you. Face it, Andy. You sold your soul the day you put on those first pair of Jimmy Choo's. I saw you. She bites off a hunk of dinner roll. And with her mouth full. And you know... Let me... Okay, hold on. With her mouth full. <laughs> and you know what really kills me? The clothes you're about to get. You don't deserve them. You eat carbs, for Christ's sake. It's so unfair. Just go. Emily. I said go. Okay, let me <laughs> let me bite this this jelly. Um, let's see. Okay, cut to a gallery in Chelsea. Lily has curated a show at the gallery where she works. Lily rushes around. Nate's not there yet. Andy stands with Doug. <clears throat> You're going to Paris for the couture shows? That's the coolest fashion event of the year. Who are you going to see? Galliano? Lagerfeld? Nicholas Geskier? Okay, now you're scaring me. Just then, Lily walks over to them. Lily, this show is amazing. I'm so proud of you. I wasn't sure you'd be able to make it. What are you talking about? I wouldn't miss this. Start with the murals in the other room. They're amazing. Andy looks at the artwork, and suddenly she hears a voice. Hey, Miranda girl. I was just thinking about you. Come on. It's true. I'm profiling Gautier for interview. I was making plans for Paris and found myself wondering if you would be there. Actually, I am going. That's great. I'm staying at a fantastic little hotel in the 7th across the street from a falafel restaurant that will change your life. 
Sorry, I'll be too busy working. You'll have to find someone else's life to change. But that's just it. I'm starting to wonder if I can. And with that, he leans in, plants a soft kiss on her cheek. Andy closes her eyes, blushing like crazy. When she opens her eyes, Christian's gone, and it's not for a moment that she notices Lily about 10 feet away, staring at her, a look of surprise and disgust on her face. Andy follows Lily through the gallery. <clears throat> he, Lily, he's just a guy I know from work. Yeah, that looked like work. You're making a big deal out of... The Andy I know is madly in love with Nate. Is always five minutes early and thinks Club Monaco is couture. For the last 16 years, I've known everything about that Andy. But this person... This Glamazon who skulks around in corners with some random hot fashion guy? I don't get her. Have fun in Paris. <laughs> she turns and walks away. Andy turns, Nate is standing there. You're going to Paris? It just happened. I thought Paris was some big deal for Emily and... Great, now you're going to give me a hard time too? Andy walks away, upset. Nate follows her. Nate follows Andy outside. What the hell's wrong with you? Miranda asked me and I couldn't say no, okay? I didn't have a choice. I know, I know. That's your answer for everything lately. I didn't have a choice. Like this job was forced on you. Like you don't make these decisions yourself. Okay, I get it. You're mad because I work late all the time, because I missed your birthday party. Oh, come on. What am I, four? You hate Runway and Miranda, you think fashion is stupid, you've made that clear. Andy, I make port wine reductions all day. I'm not exactly in the Peace Corp. I wouldn't care if you were out all night pole dancing if you did it with some integrity. So now I have no integrity, great. You used to say this was just a job. You used to make fun of those Runway girls. And now you've become one of them. That's absurd. Look at you. Now that I know how much you're willing to change to be successful, it makes me wonder if we ever had anything in common. You don't mean that. Andy tries to catch her breath. <laughs> then maybe this trip is coming at a good time. Maybe we should take a break. She stands there waiting for him to protest. Throw his arms around her. He looks at her, stunned at what she just said. And, <clears throat> and after a painful moment, he simply walks away. Nate! He turns and just then her phone rings. They both know who it is and that she has to take the call. In case you're wondering... The person whose calls you always take, that's the relationship you're in. I hope you two are very happy together. And he walks away. Andy clicks on the phone. Hello, Miranda. <clears throat> the scene cuts to a little montage of Paris and then cuts to inside of the limo. Andy looks out the window watching Paris at night whizzing by, and even though she's still feeling melancholy, she's awed by what she sees. Miranda, sitting across from Andy, is not even looking out the window. She's looking through the book. Um... Let's see. Okay, so now we're in the fashion show. <laughs> Miranda walks by some paparazzi outside the Chanel show. They scream her name, she shows off her best smile. Andy squints, blinded by the flashbulbs. Suddenly, she hears a voice behind her. You know, I've been thinking, and you still owe me for Harry Potter. She turns, sees Christian, and she finds herself alarmingly happy to see him. 
Oh, do I? Of course you do. You working tonight? Actually, Miranda has a dinner. Oh, so you're free. Perfect. Oh, but there's a problem, huh? Le boyfriend. At the mention of this, Andy blushes slightly. Wait, don't tell me. The boyfriend is non... Non plus? Non plus? Je suis très très désolé. Oh, you're so full of it. You are not désolé at all. Yeah, not even a little. What time should I pick you up? <clears throat> Andy, oh, cut to Miranda's suite. Andy walks in, cheerful, carrying a seating chart. She's surprised to see Miranda just sitting on the sofa. There's a strange lag before she looks up at Andy. Andy registers something is odd. <clears throat> there you are. We need to go over the seating chart for the luncheon. Andy starts to take the chart out of her bag, but she can't help but notice Miranda is staring into space. Sure, no problem. I have it right here. Finally, Miranda focuses on her. By all means, move at a glacial pace. You know how that thrills me. Andy puts down the seating chart. Miranda studies it, and there's an uncharacteristic lag in her decision making. Something's definitely up. Okay, so first of all, let's put Jay-Z at my table. But your table's full. Stephen won't be coming. So Stephen's not... So you don't need me to fetch Stephen from the airport tomorrow? Well, if you speak to him and he decides, and he decides to rethink the divorce, then fetch him. Fetch away. When we get back to New York, we'll need to think of a way to keep it out of the press. <clears throat> Another divorce in the papers, and we all know what they'll say about me. Dragon Lady, career obsessed, driven away another Mr. Priestley. He knew who I was, you know. They all did. And at first, they're always proud to be with a powerful, accomplished woman. That's what they say, but then... I don't care what anyone says about me, of course, but it's so unfair to the girls. Another disappointment. Another stepfather, gone. I mean, the point is, we really need to figure out where to put Donatella because she's barely speaking to anyone. Andy can't believe she's recovered so quickly. Miranda, I'm so sorry. If you want me to cancel your evening, I can. Don't be ridiculous. Why would you do that? Miranda, is there... Is there anything else I can do? Your job. Uh, cut to a hotel suite. Let's see. Andy's dressed for her date with Christian. Just then, there's a knock at the door, and Andy opens it. It's Nigel. Listen, I need Miranda's itinerary because... Who put that together for you? What do you mean? That outfit. 
Oh, I just threw it on. Incredible. Well, I guess my work here really is done. Come on, let's have champagne. We're celebrating. He walks over to the mini bar and takes out champagne, pops the cork, and pours two glasses. What are we toasting? To getting the dream job, the one a million girls wanted. Nigel, I got my job months ago. I'm not talking about you. James Holt. Massimo is investing in James' company, taking it global with the rest of CFG. Shoes, bags, fragrances, the works. So James needs a partner. And that would be me. Oh, Miranda knows. She put me up for it. You're leaving? Nigel, I can't imagine Runway without you. Can you believe it? For the first time in 18 years, I'm going to call the shots in my own life. One day, I might be able to come to Paris and actually see Paris. God, I'm so happy for you, Nigel. You deserve it. Bet your ass. Cut to this restaurant. Christian and Andy have dinner in a tiny romantic restaurant on the place Place de, de Vosge? Vosges? Wow, I really fucked that name up. I'm sorry. I've never seen anyone as dedicated as Miranda. That's fantastic. Can we stop talking about her now? I'm just saying, yes, there are things she does I don't agree with, but... Oh, come on, Andy. You hate her. Just admit it. She's a notorious sadist and not in the good way. Okay, so she's tough. But if Miranda were a man, no one would notice anything but how great she is at her job. I can't believe this. You're defending her. The wide-eyed girl peddling her earnest newspaper stories. You're crossing over to the dark side. Wait, what does that say? So I can't read that. Vo Vosge? Oh, place de vo place place de Vosge, place de Vosge. I think that's what you mean. Um, what he say? Okay, he said you're crossing over to the dark side, and she says I resent that. You shouldn't. It's sexy. Sexy? Really? Really. They walk home together through the Place de, Vos Vo Place de Vosges, leaning against each other, Andy's tipsy. I have no idea where we're going. You could be leading me anywhere. Don't worry. I know this city like the back of my hand. It's my favorite place on the planet. You know what Gertrude Stein said? America is my country, and Paris is my hometown. You are unbelievable. Do you write that stuff down and file it away to use on girls? I work freelance. Leaves me with some time on my hands. Well, I never understood why everyone was so crazy about Paris. But now... It's so... Beautiful. And suddenly he catches one of her arms and almost like a dance move, pulls her into him and kisses her. I can't do this. Oh, they keep kissing. Nate and I only split up a few days ago. I've had too much wine and my judgment is impaired. I barely know you. I'm in, I'm in a strange city. I'm out of excuses. Thank God. What a fucking trashy guy. He's so gross.
<clears throat> oh my god, I'm blowing my nose, but like the tissue is shedding. What the hell? Hold on. Eh. Um, enter Christian's hotel room in the morning. Andy wakes up. Her hair and makeup from the night before are askew. She realizes what she did. We hear the sound of the shower running. She sits up, catches sight of herself in the mirror, checks a clock on her phone. Shit. Andy starts getting dressed quickly. She tries to find her left shoe, pulls on the bedspread, knocking a few papers on the bedside table. And that's when she sees something. A mock-up of a magazine with the familiar runway logo. She picks it up. Um, let's see. Christian comes out of the shower, <clears throat> comes out of the shower. Andy says, what the hell is this? What does it look like? It's a mock-up. Of? Of what American Runway will look like when Jacqueline is the new editor-in-chief. They're replacing Miranda? Yes, and she's bringing me in to run all the editorial content. Are you really surprised? Jacqueline is a lot younger than Miranda has a fresher take on things. Not to mention that American Runway is one of the most expensive books in the business. Jacqueline does the same thing with a lot less money. Irv is a businessman, you know. Miranda will be devastated. Runway is her whole life. He can't do that to her. It's done. Irv's going to tell Miranda after the party for James. And she has no idea? She's a big girl, she'll be fine. <clears throat> I have to go. In the script, it says he just goes, it's done, Andy. Um, but in the movie, he goes like, <laughs> he's like, baby, it's done. And then she goes, I'm not your baby. And then, <laughs> and then she leaves his hotel room, which I thought was awesome. Andy races down the street. She dials her cell phone. Miranda picks up. Oh, thank God. Where are you? Excuse me? I need to talk to you right away. It's about Jacqueline Follet. She... Click. Shit. Andy runs down a corridor. She paces a second, knowing she's going to get her ass kicked, then knocks on the door. Irv opens the door. We see Miranda behind him. When she sees Andy, she walks over and turns to Irv. Excuse us a moment. Miranda pulls Andy into the hall. Have you lost your mind? I have to talk to you. Do not disturb me again. Miranda walks into the room and closes the door in Andy's face. Finally, Andy sees Miranda walking in. In the chateau. We're at the chateau now. Uh, Miranda prepares to walk right past her. Miranda, wait. I have to talk to you. You can fire me if you want to after that, but... Irv is going to make Jacqueline Follet... Follet, I think? Follet, editor-in-chief of Runway. Christian Thompson told me he's going to work for her. Irv's going to tell you today. I thought if I told you now, you could fix it. Andy stands there breathless, waiting for Miranda's reaction. And Miranda looks past her. We see she's scrutinizing a passing floral arrangement. Are those freesias? What? No, I specifically told them if I see freesias anywhere, I will be very disappointed. Into the chateau again, we see Miranda mingling with everyone, looking completely poised. Um, okay. Suddenly, the room quiets as Nigel steps to the podium. 
Nigel is at the podium, introducing Miranda. For 72 years, Runway has been more than a magazine. It's been a beacon of elegance and grace. Miranda Priestley is the finest possible guardian of that beacon, setting a standard that inspires people across the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Miranda Priestley. Thank you, everyone. Before I talk to you about James and everything he's accomplished, I have news. Tonight is not just an important night for me, for Runway, and for James. It's also important for someone else in this room. As of next month, James will be partnering with CFG in an expansion of his line. James and Runway have one important thing in common, a commitment to excellence. And so, it comes as no surprise that James has selected someone from the Runway family as the new co-president of JH International. Nigel strains his suit. My esteemed colleague, Jacqueline Follet. As she indicates Jacqueline, who waves, everyone applauds. Andy's mouth falls open. She looks over at Nigel again. His face betrays nothing. He applauds along with everyone else. And Andy looks to Christian, who is also shocked as, as hell. <laughs> Let's wish Jacqueline the best as she pursues this wonderful opportunity. And now to the business at hand a celebration of one of my favorite designers. And she smiles at James. This part really broke my heart when I first saw it. Ugh, so fucked up. <clears throat> and then, okay, let's see. They're still at the table. Andy says to Nigel, you said it was your dream job. When the time is right, she'll pay me back. You sure about that? No, but I hope for the best. I have to. Let's see, cut to the limo. Miranda and Andy ride in the limo on their way back to Paris. Miranda is as relaxed as we've seen her. You thought I didn't know. I've known what was happening for quite some time. It took a little while to find a suitable alternative for Jacqueline, one she would accept. It turned out that James Holt job is so absurdly overpaid. She jumped at it. Then I let Irv know Jacqueline was unavailable. Truth is, there's no one who can do what I do, her included. Any of his other choices would find the job impossible and the magazine would surely suffer, especially because of the list. list of designers, photographers, editors, writers, models, all of whom were found by me and nurtured by me. All of whom who have promised to follow me whenever and if ever I leave runway to any publication I choose. Of course, as soon as Irv understood, he reconsidered. Andy looks at Miranda taking it all in. I must say, I was impressed with you, how intently you tried to warn me. I never thought I would say this, Andrea, but I see some of myself in you, your dedication, your focus. Randa looks out the window. They're approaching the next party and the paparazzi are waiting outside. People think success happens to you. It doesn't. You choose it. 
every day I choose excellence. Who else does what I do at my level? Nobody. They don't even understand what it takes, the days measured in milliseconds. But now you know, and I know, that you have it in you. That you can see beyond what other that you can see beyond what other people want and choose for yourself. But I don't think I'm like that. I couldn't do what you did to Nigel Miranda. There's no way I could do something like that. Of course you can. You already did. To Emily. That's not what I... That was different. I didn't have a choice. No. You did choose. You chose to get ahead. But what if it's not what I want? I mean, what if I don't want to live the, the way you do? Miranda looks at her and smiles, and this time, for the first time, her smile is almost maternal. Don't be silly, Andrea. This is what everyone wants. Everyone wants to be us. And with that, she opens the door to the limo, onto the red carpet where she is instantly embraced by the flashing lights of the cameras. Andy quietly steps out behind Miranda, squinting. She's never gotten used to the lights. Miranda moves down the red carpet. We follow her. It's not until Miranda is about <clears throat> to open the door that she realizes Andy is no longer beside her. We see Andy walking up the street in the dusky light. She's never looked more beautiful. She's serene and she's free. The wind blows through her hair. She smiles. Her phone rings. She looks down, sees the name Miranda. Andy doesn't break stride for a moment as she tosh toshes <laughs> as she tosses the ringing phone into the nearest fountain. And now we cut to a restaurant. Andy waits nervously. Nate walks in, slides into the booth across from her. I have to be at work in 10 minutes. What's up? I just wanted to say, Nate, you were right about everything. I turned my back on my friends, my family, on everything I believed in, and for what? Shoes and jackets and belts and... Nate, I'm just, I'm so sorry. I flew up to Boston while you were gone, interviewed out the Oak Room. And you're looking at their new sous chef and moving up there in a few weeks. That's great. I, congratulations. Don't know what I'm going to do without those late night grilled cheeses. They have bread in Boston, might even have Jarlsberg. We might be able to figure something out. You think? You never know. So, how about you? What are you going to do now? Not sure. I'm not worried about you. Anything you try, you're going to kick ass. You think so? No, I know it. Thanks. I actually have a job interview today. And that's what you're wearing? Okay, so now we are entering the office where she's interviewing. Um, did my, did chat just, did chat freeze? Oh, I don't know what's happening. Oh, okay. It's fine. It's fine. 
Sorry. I still hate that she went back to me. He does not care about her at all. I'm unsure. You know... I think, T like, honestly, Nate is just kind of like the cookie cutter, like, boyfriend material type, you know, just to kind of fill in the space. So I don't really think his, his, I mean, I think his real role is to just kind of show the audience that she was putting her relationship on the line. He's a bit flavorless. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, okay, so now entering the office, Andy sits across from a scruffy guy in his early 40s. Your clips were excellent. That thing on the janitor's union, that's exactly what we do here. My only question is runway what the hell kind of blip was that learned a lot in the end though i kind of screwed it up that's not what i hear i called over there for a reference left word with some snooty girl next thing you know i got a fax from miranda Priestley herself saying that of all the assistants she had you were by far her biggest disappointment. And that if I don't hire you, I'm an idiot. You must have done something right. Andy walks over to the Elias Clark building, looking at, looking at a place that was in its way a home to her. I sweep up the building to the runway offices. She takes out her cell phone. We see Emily back at her desk. The camera widens out so we can see a new second assistant, eager and nervous. She's showing Emily a letter. My God, you call this a letter? Can you spell any word in the English language? The phone rings. Emily picks up. Miranda Priestley's office. Emily, it's Andy. Don't hang up. I have a favor to ask you. You're joking. You have a favor to ask of me? Thing is, I have all these clothes from Paris and I don't have anywhere to wear them. So I was wondering, is there any way you could take them off my hands? Emily realizes what Andy is offering, but she won't let that show. Well, I don't know. It is a huge imposition, but I suppose I could help you out. I'll have Roy pick them up this afternoon. Thanks, Emily. I appreciate it. And then in the movie, the script says something different, but in the movie, she like walks with her crutches and then looks at the second assistant and she goes, you have very big shoes to fill. I hope you know that. Andy hangs up her phone and smiles and suddenly she sees Miranda walk out of the building on the phone. I don't understand why it's so challenging to get a car when I ask for one. And at that moment, the car edges into view, Miranda hangs up and strides towards it. And just then, something catches Miranda's eyes, Andy watching her. They look at each other. And then Andy nods her head, in thanks, in salutation, and in farewell. But Miranda does not react. She gets into the car. Andy shakes her head. That's Miranda. She smiles, then turns and starts to walk down the street. Cut into the car. Miranda gets in, sits back in her seat. Through her window, she can see Andy, a bounce in her step, walking away. And Miranda, alone, 
where no one can see her, finally breaks into a real smile. She nods to, she looks at the driver in the movie, <laughs> in the movie, and then she goes, go. And that's the end. Oh my God. Holy shit. I did it. I read the whole script. <laughs> that was crazy. Honestly, I'm so shocked at myself. I'm so shocked that I was able to get through that whole thing without like fading out of existence and falling asleep. Oh my God. That was so much fun. It's because you really like it? Yeah, I, I mean... Oh my god, that was so much fun. I mean, my throat is kind of killing me now and it's dry as hell. But that was so much fun. I'm not sure if I ever want to do that again, though. Because... <laughs> I'm, if, if I were to do that again, I would really have to like something and just be like like obsessed with it. It was entertaining, I'm glad. Yeah, let me drink some water. Yeah, maybe next time I should find someone and then we can we can reenact stuff together yeah I hope that you guys actually watch the movie for those of you that haven't seen it yet or you know those of you have who have seen it time to go rewatch think I did a good job I'm unsure but you know it's it was fun you watched the movie just for this stream I'm so glad honestly I could as long as if more people watch this movie because um, even if I was like shit at reading, at least I'm spreading the message of this movie. <laughs> oh, I want to rewatch it too again. God, it's such a good movie. How many times have you watched it? Probably like a handful of times, not too many. We could have a watch along. I know, justice for Nigel. There's like so many, there's so many plot holes that just like, you know, things that could have potential for a sequel, but I think it's fine as it is. I don't think it needs a sequel. <clears throat> Anyway, um, let's go ahead. Oh, I'm going to go back to the regular screen because this one I made just for this. And let me put the blanket back on because now I can be cozy again.
Oh god, I have to scratch. Scratch? Stretch. Oh my god, I can't speak. Egoa. Muskashiyo. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and read everything that came through from this stream. Thank you guys so much for sitting through all of this with me. Um, I wasn't sure how this would go because I, I, I wasn't sure, like, you know, this kind of content. I don't know if it, it would have done well, but really, I just did it for me anyway. So... <laughs> Oh, uppies. Boop. Okay. All right, everyone. Um, let me go through the things. Okay, so Fleur AC. Welcome to the Ukiverse. Thank you, thank you. M and Tiff, welcome back. Nachovi, welcome back for two years. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Four million on break free? Wait, for real? Oh my god. It was just... Wait. It was just um this past Sunday that I sent a message to the other boys and was like, Guys, look, 3 million. That's so crazy. You want me to end the stream and say that's all? Should I replace the the pufferfish sound? Honestly, the pufferfish sound has been getting like it. It's not even the pufferfish sound anymore. It just like has turned into something else. Okay, so continuing on, um. Mish, thank you for the supa. Thank you, thank you. Um, Fate Neeks. Sorry if I said that wrong. Um, K. Den. Coffee and Stars. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, new ending tagline. It's okay, guys. Like... I can't, I can't keep adding on, you know, because then it'll get too crazy. So maybe every so often we can change the ending tag. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Yona and Nadeko, welcome to the Ukiverse, both of you. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Zoo, thank you for the super. Thank you, thank you. You want me to read more? Oh my god. Well, I'm... I'm glad that some of you enjoyed it. Maybe I'll think about it. Or maybe I can reenact certain scenes or something. Um, Raimu and Dandelion, welcome back. Miki, welcome to the Ukiverse. Thank you, thank you. Ooh, I know those, Osh those Oshi marks. You also like watching Kaisei. Uh, Toru, welcome back for two years. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Dandelion and Damien, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you watched it for fashion class. Of course. I mean, yeah. Uh, Shifon, welcome back as well. Thank you, thank you. Um, Jenny, Nadeko... Try Princess and Rismo. Thank you all for the supas. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Gabby, Fifi, and CHY. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you, th thank you, thank you. Uh, Nicole, Layla. Oh, and Layla again. Two Laylas. Um, <laughs> thank you all for the supas. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Jenny, Aaron Scott, and Akri. Well, thank you all for the supas as well. Not gonna lie, I didn't think you were you were actually gonna do it. Me too. I didn't think I would actually do it either. But here we are now. <laughs> A stream where I read the entire script of Devil Wears Prada. 
the thing is i think i th i felt like it was okay because the actual movie is around like it's like not even two hours so i guess i thought it was it would be doable and turns out it is um liz and sakura may welcome back both of you thank you so much sophia and moiso chan thank you both for the supers thank you thank you arigato itsumo haishin ni kite kurete arigato gozaimasu otsukare sama desu snacks thank you for the five gifted thank you thank you all right so what we have going on tomorrow is i'll be streaming on billy billy um that will be around 11 hours from now i'm gonna be playing a pizza possum um i don't really know i just saw the game in steam and the description of just like your goal in the game is to is to eat i was like hell yeah this is my type of game <laughs> so that's what i'll do um in the meantime uh i'll upload the last billy billy stream to the channel because i forgot to do that oh sano thank you for the akasupa oh my god akasupa arigato gozaimasu sunday's my birthday so let me have a spot for myself a little early oh my god I hope you have an amazing birthday happy early birthday thank you for spending time with us always thank you for all the love and support and i'm glad that you're treating yourself oh my god i'm glad thank you thank you and hama uh thank you for the super as well and sophia thank you for the five gifted thank you thank you Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Um, let me refresh. I don't think anyone is streaming right now. Uh, unless. Hold on. <clears throat> VV streaming. Okay, cool. Let's go to VV. All right, as usual, everyone, make sure to read chat rules before you start chatting and also show her lots of love and support. Remember to stay hydrated. And if you're hungry like me, I hope that you get something to eat. Um. Oh, Fuyu, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. I'll see you guys tomorrow on Billy Billy for Pizza Possum. Um, also, good luck to everyone who is going to be purchasing the uh, meet and greet tickets for this event in Singapore. Good luck to everyone. Um, I hope I'm I, I'm very excited to meet all of you. <clears throat> um, hold on. Uh oh. Okay, wait. Wait. There we go. Okay, yes. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And if not tomorrow on Billy Billy, I'll see you on Sunday for more Snufkin Melody of Moomin Valley. Okay, bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. And also Mapur and Elisa, thank you both for the supas. Thank you, thank you. Bye bye, everyone. <clears throat> bye bye. Mwah. Can't forget that. Bye bye. <clears throat>
That's all.